Brittle's face contorted. Then he forced into an awful smile. So your mother died to save you, yes. That's a powerful counter charm I can see now. There's nothing special about you after all. I wondered, you see, because there are strange likenesses between us, Harry Potter. Even the, you must have noticed, both half-bloods, orphans, raised by muggles, probably the only two parcel mouths to come out of Hogwarts since the great Slytherin himself, we even look something alike. But after all, it's merely a lucky chance that saved you from me. That's all I wanted to know. Harry stood tense, waiting for Riddle to raise his wand, but Riddle's twisted smile was widening again. Now, Harry... I'm going to teach you a little lesson. Let's match the powers of Lord Voldemort, heir of Slazar Slytherin, against the famous Hetty Potter and the best weapons Dumbledore can give him. He cast an amused eye over Fox and the sorting hat, then walked away. Harry, fear spreading up his numb legs, watched Riddle stop between the high pillars and look up into the stone face of Slytherin high above him. In the half-darkness, Riddle opened his mouth wide and hissed, but Harry understood what he was saying. Speak to me, Slytherin, greatest of Hogwarts for. Harry wheeled around to look up at the statue, Fox swaying on his shoulder. Slytherin's gigantic stone face was moving, horror-struck. Harry saw the mouth opening, wider and wider and wider, making a huge black hole, and something was sta staring inside the statue's mouth. Something was slithering up from its death. Harry backed away until it hit the chamber wall, and as his shut his eyes tight, he felt Falk's sweet wing sweep his cheek as he look as he took flight. Harry wanted to shout, "Don't leave me!" But what chance did the phoenix have against the kings of a serpent? Something huge hit the stone floor of the chamber. Harry felt it shudder. He knew what was happening. He could sense it. He could almost see the giant serpent uncoiling himself from Slytherin's mouth. Then he heard Riddle Hissing's voice, Kill him. The basilisk was moving towards Harry, and he could fear, hear the heavy body slithering heavily across the dusty floor. Eyes still tightly shut, Harry began to run blindly sideways, his hands outstretched, feeling his way. Voldemort was laughing. Harry tripped and fell <clears throat> hard onto the stone and tasted blood. The serpent was barely a few feet from him. He could hear it coming. There was a loud, explosive splitting sound right above him. And then something heavy hit Harry so hard that he was smashed into the wall. Waiting for his fangs to sink through his body, he heard more mad hissing, something thrashing wildly off the pillows. He couldn't help it. He opened his eyes wide enough to squint at what was going on. The enormous serpent, high, poisonous, green, thick as an oak trunk, had raised itself high into the air, and great blunt headways was weaving drunkenly towards the pillars, and Harry trembled. Already to close his eyes, if he turned, he saw that he had distracted the snake. Fox was soaring around his head, and the ballast was snapping furiously at him, the fangs were long and thin. Escabas, Fox dived. Then the golden beak sank into the sight, and a sudden shower of dark blood splattered the floor. The snake's tail thrashed narrowly, missing Harry. Before Harry could shut his eyes, he turned. He looked straight into the face and saw that both eyes of its great bulbous yellow eyes had been punctured by the phoenix. Blood was streaming on the floor, and the snake was spitting in agony. No, he heard Riddle screaming, leave the bird, leave the bird, the boy, the boy is behind you. You can still smell him, kill him. The blinded serpent swayed, confused, still deadly. Fox was circling around his head, piping with eerie song, jabbing here and there. Scaly nose, bloody pour, blood pour from his ruined eyes. Help me, help me, Harry muttered wildly. Someone, anyone. Then the snake's tail whipped across the floor. Harry ducked. Something soft hit his face. The ballast had swept the sorting hat into Harry's arms. Harry seized it. It was all he had left. 
his only chance. He rammed it onto his head and threw himself onto the floor. The ballast tail swung over him. Help me, help me, Harry thought, his eyes screwed up tight under that. Please help me. There was no answer. Answering voice. Instead, the hat contracted, and the, though an invisible hand was squeezing it very tightly, something very hard and very heavy thubbed it onto Harry's head, almost knocked him completely out. Stars winking in front of his eyes, he grabbed the top of the hat, pulled it off, and felt something long and hard beneath it. A gleaming silvery sword had appeared. Inside that hat was a handle of glittering rubies the size of eggs. Kill the boy! Leave the bud! The boy is behind you! Sniff! Smell him! Harry was on his feet, ready, and the ballast's head was fa was falling, to bo bo body coiling around, hitting pillars as it twisted to face him. He could see the vast, bloody eyes sockets, see the mouth stretching wide, wide enough to swallow him whole. Lined with the fangs, long his sword, glittering and venomous. He lunged blindly. Harry dodged and hit the chamber wall. It lunged again, and forked tongue lashed Harry's side. He raised the sword with both hands. The ballast lunged again, and this time his aim was true. Harry drew his whole weight behind that sword and dove it into the hilt of the roof of the serpent's mouth. But as warm blood drenched Harry's arm, he felt a searing pain just above his elbow. Long, poisonous fang was sinking deeper and deeper into his arm, and he splintered as the ballast kneeled over sideways and fell, twitching to the floor. Harry slid down the wall, gripped the fang that was spreading his poison through his body, and rushed it out of his arms. But he knew it was too late. White hot pain was spreading slowly, steadily from the wound. Even as he dropped the fang, he watched his own blood soaking his robes. As his vision went foggy, the chamber was now dissolving into a whirl of dull color. The patch of scarlet swam past, and Harry heard a soft clatter claws beside him. Fox, said Harry thickly. You were fantastic, Fox. He felt the bird lay its beautiful head on the spot where the serpent's fang had pierced him. He could hear echoing footsteps, and the dark shadow moved in front of him. You're dead, Harry Potter, said Riddle's voice above him. Dead! Even Dumbledore's bird knows it. Do you see what he's doing, Potter? He's crying. Harry blinked. Fox head slid in and out of focus. Thick, pearly tears were trickling down the glossy feathers. I'm going to sit here and watch you die, Harry Potter. Take your time. I'm in no hurry. Harry felt drowsy. Everything around him seemed to be spinning. So ends the famous Harry Potter said the riddle in the distant voice. Alone in the chamber of secrets, forsaken by his friends, defeated at last by the Dark Lord. So he unwisely challenged, you'll be back with your dear mudblood mother soon, Harry. She brought you twelve years and borrowed time, but the Lord Voldemort got you in the end, as you knew he must. If this is dying, thought Harry, it's not so bad. Even the pain was leaving him, but then... But was this dying? Instead of going black, the chamber seemed to be coming back into focus. Harry gave his head a little shake, and there was Falk still resting on his head. Harry's own pearly patch of tears was shining all around the wound, except there was no wound. Get away, bird, said Riddle's voice suddenly. Get away from him. I said, get away. Harry raised his head. Riddle was pointing at Harry's wound at Falk. And there was a bang like a gun, and Fox took flight again. In a whirl of gold and scarlet, Phoenix tears, said Riddle quietly, staring at Harry's arm. Of course. Healing powers. Oh, I forgot. He looked into Harry's face. But it makes no difference. In fact, I prefer it this way. It's just you and me, Harry Potter. You and me. He raised his wand, and then in a rush of wings, Fox had soared back overhead, Something fell into Harry's lap, the diary. For a split second, both Harry and Tom, still Ray, stared at it. Then, without thinking, without even considering as though what he was meant to do all along, Harry seized the ballast fang on the floor next to him and plunged it straight into the heart of the book. 
There was a long, dreadful, piercing scream. The ink spurted out of the diary in torrents, streaming over Harry's hands, flooding the floor. Riddle was writhing and twisting and screaming and flailing, and then he had gone. Harry's wand fell to the floor with a clatter, and there was silence. Silence is that for the deadly, uh, steady drip, drip, drip of ink still oozing from the diary. The ballast, the venom, had burned a sizzling hole right through it. Shaking all over, Harry pulled himself. His head was spinning as though he just traveled miles of by flu powder. Slowly, he gathered to get together his wand and the sorting hat, but the huge tug retrieved the glittering sword from the roof of the ballast's mouth. Then came a faint moan at the end of the chamber. Ginny was stirring. Harry hurried towards her, and she sat up. Her bemused eyes traveled from the huge form of the dead ballast over Harry in his blood-soaked robes, then to the diary in his hand. She drew a great shuddering gasp, and tears began to pour down her face. Harry, oh, Harry, I tried to tell you at breakfast, but I, 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 I couldn't say it in front of Percy. It was me, Harry. I, but I swear, I swear, I, did, I didn't do mean it. R Riddle made me. He took me over and how, how did you kill that? That thing? What, where's Riddle? The last thing I remember is him coming out of the diary. It's all right, said Harry, holding up the diary and showing Ginny the fang hole. Riddle's finished. Look, him and the ballast. Come on, Ginny. Let's get out of here. I'm going to be expelled, Jimmy. Ginny wept as Harry helped her wake it awkwardly to her feet. Oh, I've looked forward to coming to Hogwarts ever since Bill Bill came, and now, now I'll have to leave. And wh what will Mom and Dad say? Fox was waiting for them, hovering over the chamber entrance. Harry urged Ginny forward, and they stepped over the motionless coils of the dead ballasts. Through the echoing gloom and back into the tunnel, Harry heard the stone doors close behind them with a soft hiss. After a few minutes, progress up the dark tunnel and the distant sound of a slowly shifting rocks reached Harry's ears. Ron! Harry yelled, speeding up. Ginny's okay! I've got her! He heard Ron give a strange cheer and then turn next to Ben to see what he was eager face staring through the sizable gap he had managed to make in the rock fall. Ginny! Ron thrust his arms through the gap of the rock to pull her through at first. You're alive! I don't believe it! Oh, what happened? How? What? Where did that bird come from? Fox had swooped through the gap of the after Ginny. He's Dumbledore's, said Harry, squeezing through himself. How come you've got a sword? said Ron, gaping at the glittering weapon in Harry's hand. I'll explain it when I get out when we get out of here, said Harry, with a sideways glance at Jenny, who was now crying harder than ever. But later, said Ron short said Harry said shortly. He didn't think it was a good idea to tell Ron what had been opening the chamber, not in front of Jenny anyways. Where's Lockhart? Back there, said Ron, looking puzzled but jerking his head up the tunnel towards the pipe. He's in a bad way. Come and see. Led by Fox, whose wild scarlet wings emitted a soft golden glow in the darkness, they followed all the way back to the mouth of the pipe. Gilderoy Lockhart was sitting there, humming placidly to himself. His memory's gone, said Ron. The memory charm backfired. He hit himself instead of us. Hm. Hasn't got a clue who he is, or where he is, or who we are. I told him to come and wait here. He's a danger to himself. Lockhart peered only good-naturedly up at them all. Hello, he said. Odd sort of place, isn't it? Do, do you live here? No, said Ron, raising his eyebrows at Harry. Harry bent down and looked up the long, dark pipe. Have you thought how we're going to get back up this, he said to Ron. Ron shook his head, but Fox, the phoenix, had swooped past Harry and was now fluttering in front of him, his beady eyes bright in the dark. He was waving his long golden f tail feathers. Harry looked uncertainly at him. He looks like he wants you to grab a hold, said Ron, looking perplexed. But you must be too heavy for the bird to pull up there. 
Fox, said Harry, isn't an ordinary bird. He turned quickly to the others. We've got to hold on to each other. Ginny, grab Ron's hand. Professor Lockhart. He, this, he means you, Ron said sharply to Lockhart. You hold Ginny's other hand. He tucked the sword in the sorting hat in his belt. Ron took hold of the back of Harry's robes, and Harry reached out and ho took a hold of Fox's strangely hot tail feathers. An extraordinary lightness seemed to spread through his whole body, and the next second, in a rush of wings, they were flying upward through the pipe. Harry could hear Lockhart dangling below him, saying, Amazing! Amazing! This is just like magic! The chill air was whipping through Harry's hair, and before he'd stopped enjoying the ride, it was over. All four of them were hitting the floor, wet floor of the Moaning Moto's bathroom, said so Lockhart straightened his hat, <clears throat> and the sink hid the pipe that was sliding back into place. Mermel goggled at him. You're alive, she said blankly to Harry. Well, there's no need to sound disappointed, he said grimly, wiping the flecks of blood and slime off his glasses. Oh, well, i just been thinking that if you died, you'd have been welcome with the spare my toilet, share my toilet, said Myrtle, blushing a little. Ugh, said Ron, and <laughs> left the bathroom for the dark, deserted corridor outside. Harry... I think Myrtle's grown fond of you. You've got a comp competition, Ginny. The tears were still flowing silently down Ginny's face. Where now? said Ron, with an anxious look at Ginny. Harry pointed. Fox was leading the way, glowing gold along the corridor. They strode after him. Moments later, they found themselves in outside Professor McGonagall's office. Harry knocked and pushed the door open. <laughs>